Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is inspired by a comment I got on one of my previous videos from Nicole Lewis and she was asking about how to use social media and if I had any tips. So that is what today's video is going to be all about, so I really hope you enjoy it. I've been using various forms of social media since I started on my journey to becoming a freelance illustrator. Um, and things have changed a lot over the years and I've definitely found myself moving in different directions depending on where the audiences were and how I thought I could best use certain apps. So I'm going to be sharing with you some things that I've learnt in this journey of using social media as an artist and illustrator and yeah, let's get into it. The number one piece of advice that I have is boring and we're all sick of hearing it, including me, um, but it is my number one piece of advice because it's so important. And that is consistency and to have consistency with your uploading and with using social media as a marketing tool. And this is not something that I've always been particularly good at and I think I've kind of learnt the hard way how important it is. So I've been on YouTube for many years now and you'll notice that my channel is not particularly large and I do think that is quite a lot to do with the fact that I haven't been very consistent over the years. I go through stages where I upload weekly videos, I go through stages where I even upload daily videos and then I will take a break because I find it exhausting, it's a lot of work but um, I've kind of learnt that you have to push through that and really try and find a schedule that will mean that you can upload frequently. There are a lot of positives to being consistent. I think it helps you improve your skills on your chosen social media site. Also, a lot of entrepreneurs and successful people tell you how important habit is. Consistency breeds habit. I think there's a quote about that that I read the other day. Consistency also means that your audience will begin to trust you and build a relationship with you because they know that you're going to be there frequently on the platform that you've chosen so they can invest more time in what you're putting up there because it's going to keep coming and it's going to keep adding value to their life. My second tip for artists and illustrators and creators who want to use social media is to be honest because there's really nothing I appreciate more when I follow artists and illustrators that I admire online when they are able to be honest with their audience. I think by now, we've used social media for such a long time, we're kind of getting a bit sick of seeing such perfect lives being presented to us. After a while, it doesn't make you feel so good about your own achievements. So I just think it's really helpful to be honest with your audience. I think it helps, again, build trust. They'll really value your honest opinion on how your career or your artwork is going at that current moment and I just think it makes more of a community. They can also share their honest opinions on how their business is going. I would say don't be overly negative but also don't be afraid to show the real person behind the artwork. My third piece of advice would be to make sure you're not spreading yourself too thinly across the internet. So I think there's a lot of pressure to always be up to date and using the most popular platforms or the newest platforms or the newest crazes, but I have noticed over the years that there are apps that come and go that for me haven't been worthwhile to join. It's a lot of work to manage social media sites and I think if you have too many of them on the go at once, you're not able to contribute to one platform as well as you would like to and yeah, you're just not going to be able to dedicate enough time to generating an audience and reaching new people. So for me, my preferred two platforms would be Instagram and YouTube and that is where I spend most of my time and I don't really bother with too many other things. I use Twitter but um, not really in a strategic kind of way, just in a checking in once a day or once every couple of days type of thing and I focus my attentions on these two platforms that have really benefited me the most. My next piece of advice would be to make the effort to learn something new. Uh, for me especially, I am often intimidated by learning new software and um, learning new tech things in general because I'm not the most tech savvy person. I just kind of learn the minimum to get by. But I really think um, that if you are able to make the effort to learn more, 
then it's really going to help you reach new people because not everyone has the time or the inclination to learn new things um, and to do the things that take more effort than others. I think um, a lot of people use Instagram really well because you can just take a photo, upload it, put a caption and then you're done. But doing things that involve more effort like maybe blogging on a regular basis or uploading YouTube videos or making tutorials or something like that involves a lot more time and effort. You do have to learn new skills but I think the rewards you can get from them are greater. Um, the interactions you can have with your audience are much deeper and more meaningful. Something important to think about is where your skills will be best suited on social media. So for example, if you are someone who loves to write, if you're really good with words, maybe a blog would be the best thing for you. If your photography skills are amazing, if you have a pretty decent camera and you love arranging um, compositions and taking photographs, then the obvious choice would be Instagram or maybe Tumblr or blog. If you are someone who has really great people skills and you love to talk, I might suggest something like Twitch or another live streaming service. If you're someone who loves to tell a story and you like a narrative, if you love film for example, maybe YouTube videos would work well for you. If you're someone that's really opinionated, you have a lot to say on a certain subject matter and you feel like you can add value to a certain subject matter, I think a podcast would be maybe a good option for you. I think it's really beneficial to play towards your strengths and really have a good think about where you might be best suited online. My next piece of advice would be to not focus too much on the breakthrough moment. I think we live in a society that celebrates the viral videos and the viral content. We make it seem as if that should be the be all and end all to get something that is picked up by millions of people and lots of people see it and we're all working towards finding that little piece of viral content that's gonna really boost our career and mean that we can stop trying. And I've had that mentality myself. I've been thinking, what is it that's gonna make um, my content be picked up and seen by as many people as possible? But I've just learned that that's a very exhausting way to think about things. And it's just not realistic either. Not everyone is gonna have a viral moment. I don't necessarily think that should be the thing you're striving for. I think, again, it, consistency is important. So strive for being consistently better than your last post. Learn new things along the way. And just, for me, I found that a more realistic approach is to expect a very gentle increase in growth in subscribers or followers. I also believe that thinking like that kind of makes you a bit disheartened. It can really drain you and you don't need those kind of negative thoughts when you're trying to push on and use social media to your, the best of your ability. So ditch that viral goal. <laughs> My seventh tip is to find your niche online and a lot of social media gurus will tell you to do this but I think it can be a bit confusing. What really helped me to find my niche and I think I'm still figuring out my niche but um, I looked to other creators who I really admired online and who had a good relationship with their audience and worked out what their niche was and from studying other people and seeing what their little areas of expertise were I could then reflect on myself and see what skills I think I might have and I think also listening carefully to your feedback can be really helpful to find out what people are really enjoying and appreciating about your posts. For me I have a lot of people saying that they really appreciate my honesty and um, the fact that I'm able to be quite down to earth about the world of illustration so I think that's my niche in a way is just being real with people I'm not glossing over um, how amazing it is to be an illustrator. I'm showing the realities when I can. Another tip to figuring out where your niche might be is to think about what you're most excited about when you're creating new content. Is it telling a story? Is it um, creating beautifully organised um, blog posts? Is it sharing a lesson you've learnt this week? Is it just interacting with people on a really personal level? Um, yeah, just try and figure out what specifics you can bring to your audience and then work on those as much as possible.
My last tip is something that I've seen a few other artists talking about recently, and that is that social media marketing is not for every illustrator, it's not for every artist, it's not for every creator, and that is completely okay. I think a lot of young illustrators especially see the subscriber count, they see the follower count, they see the likes, and they assume that that is where the success lies, the success lies in the numbers. I follow a lot of different artists and illustrators online that I really admire, and the difference in their follower count or their subscriber count doesn't determine their success or how much money they're making in their business. Um, I follow illustrators that work with top clients and I see them having published work um, very often and for high profile businesses and I really admire that but then you will see their follower count online and it might be only a couple of thousand. You can tell it's just not where they're putting their effort and that's okay. You can put your effort elsewhere. If you find social media is really dragging you down and making you feel bad, maybe it's not the right thing for you to be doing to market your business. You can decide to have an agent who will market your artwork for you. You can use mail outs to send to clients and networking. You don't have to use social media basically. And I've also seen artists and illustrators who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and really struggling with work and with money. I would say don't feel pressured to use social media if it's not the thing for you. It doesn't have to be. So that is everything that I'm going to cover today on social media. I really hope you found this helpful. In the comments I would love to hear your favourite social media platforms. I don't have experience in the blogging world for example or Twitch or podcasts so I'd love to hear the different ways that you're marketing your work and I will see you again very soon for another video. Bye.